Hey, what up everybody? Welcome to another episode here at Electrical Code Academy. And we're gonna be doing a little lesson today, looking at some questions that are out of our Fast Tracks program so that we can kind of give you an understanding of some of the questions that you'll see in the program and try to help you work through them. Uh, but those, this is for those that aren't in our program and you want a kind of a little bit of a snippet of what, we, what you would cover as far as questions are concerned. So let's go on and get into it. And so I'm gonna look at these questions and you're gonna see that our fast track program really does dig deep into the questions because we will spend a lot of time in a unit explaining all of the nuances that lead up to the questions in the competency reviews. Uh, but again, it, it does take a dedicated focus when you're going through the program. It's a lot of reading uh, and uh, it's stuff that you might say, well, do I really need to know that? And the answer to that is absolutely. You need to know everything that's in the National Electrical Code. You don't have to memorize it, but you need to know how to find it. You need to know how to dissect it. It's going to make you better on the job. It's going to make you a better electrician. It's going to stop you from posting on social media when you really are kind of embarrassing yourself because you don't understand the code, but you want to appear that you do. We're going to fix all that. So that's what our program can do. So let's go on and jump into it. All right, so we're at the Let's Ask Paul. We're at the, still in the 2020 edition of the NEC, so we haven't migrated yet to the 2023. This is episode five in an ongoing series where we're looking at questions in the code, okay? All right, so let me kind of get us going here. All right, so here's our first question now. Make sure you've got your code book. We've got link, so we'll go look at link if we need to. Um, I do have my code book. Hopefully you have your code book. So let's kind of work our way through it. All right, so question number one, and again, these come from the Fast Tracks program, so you get a kind of an understanding of what you're going to encounter as you embark into our program. If you're new, you're considering a study program, there is no other study program out there. There's either books, there's DVDs, there's classrooms that you do it with a bunch of other people. This is one-on-one. -on -one. This is you reading material, you coming to Wednesday nights, you asking questions, you doing competency reviews. There's just nothing like it. And I've been doing this for over 30 plus years. Uh, so when we came up with the Fast Tracks concept, we are getting so many students that are successful in their exams, okay? All right, so logically what you would have done by now, rather than listen to me, you've been reading this question. So I'm gonna read it. A one family dwelling has six, three KW electric wall heaters uh, with individual thermostatic controls and five room air conditioners. Two air conditioners are rated 10.5 amps at 230 volts, and the others are rated at 7.2 amperes at 115 volts. So we've got two air conditioners at 10.5 amps, and we've got three at 7.2 amps, okay? Now you probably all know by now, if you know amps, you know volts, we're gonna be able to calculate what? The VA, all right? I'm sure you've already astutely figured that out. Now it says a service calculation is being performed, Using the optional method, how many volt amperes should be included after demand factors? So this automatically tells you that there's something that's got to be applied here. After those demand factors for the heating and air conditioning, again, assuming that uh, the heater is KW, that's three KWs or six of them, remember that KW is equivalent to KVA. So kind of a recap, KW, kilowatts, is the same as one KW, would be the same as 1,000 watts, right? Uh, one KW would be the same as one KVA, volt amperes, okay? K being 1,000, so when you see that, kind of easy to be able to translate what we're talking about here. Um, so one KVA is equivalent to 1,000 volt amperes, VA. As far as the code's concerned, when it does calculations in Article 220, VA and watts or kva and kw they're synonymous okay just one of the, some of those things that you need to remember all right so what are we going to do um let's go and come back here to me and let's see well i think we're already at me so first thing we're going to do is let's go on and uh, take this out and do a little math first since we're here so if i have six three kws right then it'd be six times three, okay? So that would be what? Six times three, that is 18 kW. So I kind of write that down, kind of get you know what the heat is right away. That's just a, at 100%, okay? So that is the connected load. I have six of them 
at 3KW. Oh, by the way, you can pause this video, work it yourself, and then come back and see if you're right, okay? All right, so we have 18KW. Now, the next thing we gotta look at is these two air conditioners that are at 10.5 amperes, and we've got three of them that are at 7.2, because remember, we have five overall. It tells us the first two, and then it says the remainders or the others at 7.2. Okay, so a couple ways we can do this. Now, since we know how many we have, we can go two times 10.5 times 230, and that should give us the total VA for those two air conditioners. So let's take our calculator and work that out. So let's go two times 10.5 times 230 equals 4,830 VA. Now that's the two air conditioners. Now remember something. We're using VA, and this was 4,830 VA. It could easily be 4,830 watts. Ultimately here, we're gonna be solving for volt amperes because that's what it's asking for, the VA. So the quicker that you can resolve to VA, the better, okay? All right, so that's for that. Now, we, now you could have just done each one individually, okay? So in the case that two times kind of got you confused, you could have just gone 10.5 times 230 and then multiplied that by two, or you could do 10.5 times 230 and then 10.5 times 230, and then add them together, it's just so much easier for us to go two times 10.5 times 230. You get it? Okay. So the next one is those 7.2 ampere rated ones. So we had three of those. So we're gonna go three times 7.2 times 115. And that is 2,484 VA. And that covers all three of those air conditioning units. Now remember, on an exam, use the voltage they give you. There's something about it that makes people wanna go, well, I know that we don't work with 230, so why don't we just use 240? No, use what they give you in the exam because they have an anticipation of what their answer will be to based on you working it based on what they give you. So use what's in the question. Okay. Don't try to overthink a question. Don't try to outthink whoever wrote the question. Just answer the question as it's presented. Okay, so what we have is 4,830 VA for the two air conditioning units at 10.5 amps, and we have 2,484 VA for the three air conditioning units. Now, now we can go to the code. We just got some values. Now on the surface, you obviously know 18 is greater than the 4,830 plus 2,484. But since this question said optional method, and in the standard method, we're comparing heat versus AC, right? Whichever is the greater. Well, essentially in the, op the, um, the opt optional method, we're doing the same thing, except for we're looking at a list and we're choosing whichever is the largest from the list, okay? It'll be easier when we go look at the code. So let's go look at the code. All right, so here we are at the code. I'm going to jump us to where we need to be real quick. So let's keep it simple for everybody because we're gonna be looking at the optional method. And what we're gonna be looking at since this is a service is we're gonna be looking at, here we go, the dwelling units, okay? So here it is 220.82. This is for a single dwelling unit. It just happens to have six 3KW heating, okay? And five air conditioning units, two of which are 10.5 and the other, other three are 7.2. We already worked that out. So here's where we're at in the code. And we're gonna be sizing for this. And we're gonna be using, obviously, the optional method. So we're gonna come down, and since the only portion of this that we're working with, here's the whole optional method right here for this dwelling unit. Now remember, if it was three or more, we would be down in 220.84, but we don't have three or more. It's just a single dwelling unit. So we're coming down. Well, we don't need to worry about the general loads because we're not being asked to do that. We're worrying about this, heating and air conditioning loads. That's what's being asked us, okay? So now we see there are a number of items here that we wanna look at. Well, we've already done the math, so we're pretty good on that. So we're gonna be looking at these six items here. So let's see if I can get this framed up here for everybody. Okay, 
So it says, the largest of the following six selections load in KVA, so again, remember I said the quicker we can get to KVA, uh, shall be included. Now, number one says take 100% of the nameplate rating of the air conditioning and cooling. We already did that. In fact, we add 4,830 plus 2,484. Those are the nameplates. Those are the values. That's what we've got. Um, and we take that at 100%. So let's go on and add that up real quick. So 4,830 plus 2,484. That was 7,314. Okay. So that's our AC. Now, Remember what I said in the standard method, heat versus AC, the heat would have been larger, and you would have thought right off the bat that that 18KW is going to win, right? <laughs> not so fast. That's why you have to really think about whether or not you're doing a standard or optional calculation. Optional. Let's look down the list here. Number two, we can see that that deals with the heat pump. It's not in our equation here. Number three also has something to do with the heat pump, not in our equation. Number four says 65% for the nameplate rating of electric space heating if less than four separately controlled units. Ah, well, we had six. So we go down to item number five, and that says 40% of the nameplate rating of electric space heaters if four or more uh, separately controlled units. Well, we said we had six separately controlled three KVA units, and we, our total was 18 KW, remember? We'll take that 18 since ultimately we have to work it down into the values that we need to work with in VA, take that 18 and do what? Let's go on and take that 18 KW and go on and make it 18,000 VA. Just work it in, get us into VA quicker, okay? And then take that and multiply that by 40%. What do you got? So let me take that 18,000, 18,000 times 0.40, that is 7,200 VA. Remember, it says take the larger. Well, guess what? You thought the heat was going to win, but you were doing the standard method mentality. Now we're in the optional method. We applied 40%. It's now 7,200. Guess which one wins? The air conditioning is larger than the heat, right? All right, let's go back and see. That's the optional method. So let's, let's check ourselves and see if we're right here. So we did the six units at 3,000. That's 18,000, but there was four or more, so we were able to do that at 40%. And this is actually C5, not C6. And so 18,000 times 40% is 7,200. But then we did the ACs. We did two times 10.5 times 230. That's 4830. We did three times 7.2 times 115, that's 2484. We added the two together, that was 7,314. Obviously, that is the larger of the two. And that's why the AC wins, okay? All right, let's look at the next one here. Question, a 5.4 KVA 240 volt electric clothes dryer will contribute blank amperes to the neutral load when calculating the service by the standard method. Okay. All right. Well, we're calculating, we're looking for the contribution of the neutral load. There's a couple ways we can do this. Okay. Now, you could say to yourself, all right, well, first of all, I know that the neutral is going to be less than what would be the ungrounded conductor value. Okay. And say, so, okay, so I get that. But I'm looking for amperes. Not ultimately VA, but I'm looking for amperes to the neutral load, okay, when I'm doing this service under the standard method. Okay, so what's the first couple things that you need to do here? All right, so first thing we want to look at 220.54, and that's going to give us the actual value that we're going to use, uh, and then we can look at 220.61b. That's for the neutral contribution. So if you've got your code book, let's go on and get on over to link and look at it. And at link, I'm going to take us first to where we go for, uh, let's see here. Let's do the first thing we want to go look. Let's go on and look at uh, closed dryers real quick. So here we're at. So we're at closed dryers, um, and you see that one through four is 100%, okay? But what you see up in the body of 220.54 on the screen here it says that the load for a household electric clothes dryer in a dwelling unit shall be either 5,000 watts 
or the nameplate, whichever is greater. Well, ours was 55.4, right? So it's greater than 5,000 watts or volt amperes. It's 5,400 watts or 5,400 volt amperes. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we got to use the 5.4 to do that. Okay, now since it's one through four is 100%, that's how we would size the ungrounded conductors, the hots, if you will. But there's something that we can do for the neutral, and that's going to take us to 220.61b. And remember, folks, you can pause this video at any time in order to be able to go look these things up for yourself, and then you can come back and play the video. All right, so here is 220.61, and here's B, permitted reductions. And you see right here, it says, a service or feeder supplying the following load shall be permitted to have an additional demand factor of 70% applied to the amount in 220.61B1, which is what we're gonna be working with, or the portion of the amount in 220.61B2. That's for when you do a load calculation and your neutral load exceeds 200 amperes, you take the first 200 at 100% and the remainder at 70%, and you just add the two together. Well, in our case, we'll be doing this one. And we're talking about for ranges, wall mount ovens, cooking units, uh, the counter mounted like a cooktop, and here's electric dryers. That's what we're focusing on with this one. Now notice it says where the maximum unbalanced load has been determined in accordance with table 220.55 for ranges and table 220.54 for dryers. And we already done that. We've determined that 54 kW or 5,400 VA is that value we're working with. I get to do what? I get to apply 70% to that. That's what it says right here. So I'm gonna take that 5,400, multiply it by 0 0.70. And that gives me 3,780 VA. That is my neutral contribution, okay? Now, that's not really what it asks us, is it? Right? So let's go back to the question. Now that we kind of got some numbers, we kind of know what we're gonna working with, we know we can apply the 70%. There's two ways to do this, and I'm gonna show you both. Let's go back and look. Okay, now, we have a VA. We know what we can do at this point because we have a voltage here. We could take that 3,780 divided by 240, and that tells me it's 15.75 amperes, right? That is the neutral contribution, okay? Now, couldn't I also take that 54 kVA or 5.4 kVA or 5,400 watts or 5,400 VA, multiply that, by 75%, okay, and do it that way, and then do that times 240, which is what we did, or could I do it a different way? Okay, let's look and see how we could do it a different way. Now, here's what we did, 54 divided by 240. We could have done, well, we did it the other way. What we did was we took the total VA, right, and we multiplied that by 70%, and then we did that by 240 to come up with our amps. And that's what we did to get this. Well, there's another way to do it. You could have done 5,400 divided by 240 in order to get their amps. And then once you had the amps, then you can apply the 70%. And that'll give you 15.75. Now, again, 220.5 allows me to round. But if you're asked on an exam, what's the actual contribution? The actual contribution is 15.75. That's the actual contribution. In our program, we'll mark either one right because we're very aware of the rounding rules, 0.5 or greater in 220.5. So, you know, we want to make sure that we keep you on track. But the actual best possible answer here is 15.75. All right, next question. Restaurants. All right, it says a restaurant contains the following commercial kitchen equipment. It has two 12 kW ovens, one 10 kW grill, two 8 kW fryers, one 1.2 kW disposer, one 1.5 kW dishwasher, and one 10 kW booster heater. And lastly, it has one 4.5 kW water heater. What is the feeder calculated load in kW for this equipment? So logically with this one, our answer 
has to be resolved to a KW value because that's what's being asked in our question. No problem. So first thing you'll identify is this is a commercial kitchen. This is commercial kitchen equipment. It's not a dwelling unit, okay? So you're not gonna be using 220.55. You're going to be, plus you've got other things in here like disposers and dishwashers and things like that. So they're in a commercial kitchen. It was established that. Where are you going to go in the code? You guessed it, 220.56. Let's go on and go to link. And here we are in link. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to 220.56. As you can see, it's titled kitchen equipment. And again, it's other than dwelling units. And here's what it says. Now we're gonna read this because this is really important aspect for us to be aware of, okay? We need to know how many appliances we have or how many of those pieces of kitchen equipment that we have. We also remember we're not gonna include things like space heating. We're not gonna talk about ventilating. We're not gonna talk about air conditioning. It's got its own rules. We're focused on the kitchen equipment. That's it. And that's all that was given us in the question, right? Okay. So reading this here, it says it shall be permissible. What does that mean first? Well, being that this is a permissible, you could take the nameplate rating of all of those KWs that we saw, add them together, and, and that would be the load. But you're permitted to apply some demands here. You're getting permission to do it, and trust me, you want to do it. Otherwise, you have overly sized services that are unnecessary or feeders that are unnecessarily large. Okay, so let's read it. It shall be permissible to calculate the load for commercial electric cooking equipment, dishwasher booster heaters, water heaters, and other kitchen equipment in accordance with Table 220.56. These demand factors shall be applied to all equipment that has either thermostatically controlled Okay, has thermostat on it. Again, most all of this will have some thermostat or is intermittent use as kitchen equipment. It means it's being used at different random times through the day, things like that, okay? So that's typically probably what's gonna happen to all that kitchen equipment anyway. So if it applies, you can apply the demand factors here. It goes on to say, these demand factors shall not apply, and I reminded you that, space heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. So don't even figure those in. Now. One of the most important lines in this whole uh, section here is, however, in no case shall the feeder or service calculated load be less than the sum of the largest two kitchen equipment loads. Now, in our question, we're only given a feeder equation. So we have to assume that these are the loads for that feeder. And maybe they're running a separate panel just there to serve these loads in that kitchen equipment because that's the context of the question. All right, so we wanna go back again. Don't overthink it. Just answer what they ask you, okay? All right, so let's kind of go back real quick. Okay, how many do we have? Let's see, we have two ovens. We have, let's see, two ovens, one grill. We have two deep fryers. We got one disposer. We have one dishwasher. We have one booster heater, and we have one water heater. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine pieces of kitchen equipment, nine. Okay, so let's go back to the code. That's important. Okay, so back at the code, let's see what demands we can apply here. All right, all right, so obviously we're at six or over, and we have nine. So it's 65%. So that's what we can apply to that. But remember, in no case can it be less than the two largest pieces of kitchen equipment in here, okay? But we have to do some math. We gotta, we gotta kinda come back and uh, do a little something so we can see where we're at. So let's kinda bring it back to us here. We're gonna work something out. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's see, we've got 212 KW, so I'm gonna write it down, 12 and 12. I got 110, so I'm gonna write that down. I got two eights, so I'm gonna write two eights down. I got one 1.2, 1 so I'm gonna write 1.2. 1 I got one 1 1.5, 1 1.5, and I've got one 10, so I'm gonna write that down, okay? And then I've got one 4.5, 4.5. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, add them all up, just add them all up. So I'm gonna do 12 plus 12 plus, 10 plus 
8 plus 8 plus 1.2 plus 1.5 plus 10 plus 4.5. Okay, 67.2 kW. Now, what did it say in 220.56 for six or more? We get to apply a 65%. Now, remember, we're trying to solve for the answer in kW. So I'm going to leave it at 67.2, and then I'm going to apply my 65% to that. So 67.2 times 0.65, that is 43.68 kW. That is the actual kW amount. So let's see what it says on our, in our question here. So we added everything up. We did 12, 12, 10, 8, 8, 1.2, 1 1.5, 10, 4.5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 67.2. That's what we got it. Multiply that 65%. That is 43.68. That is the actual contribution for our uh, feeder load. Again, it was for, let's see here, restaurant. Yes, it was for the feeder. That is what we're going to out. Now, this is interesting. Remember, that line that says it can't be less than the two largest pieces of equipment? Well, we know that the two 12s are the largest piece. So 12 and 12 is 24. So obviously, 43.68 is greater than 24. But be careful on an exam because they could give you a sequence of equipment that ultimately the two largest pieces of equipment would be greater than your calculation. And you got to be careful because it can't be less than two largest pieces of equipment. So watch for that on an exam. Very common on the Texas exam for you to have a question like that. So keep aware of that again and don't fall for anything like that because again, I'd hate to see that be something that catches you in a trap, All right? Okay. There we go. There's our answer. All right, look, folks. If you're struggling to learn the National Electrical Code, if any of this was, was kind of a struggle for you, please do me a favor. Go to FastTrackSystem.com. Go to ElectricalCodeAcademy.com. You see it up here, up, right up there. Get in our program. We have Wednesday night sessions. We will teach you the National Electrical Code. You will learn it. You will be much better, more proficient. You're not at this alone. Don't try to learn by books and DVDs, and then you don't have nobody to go to to answer those questions. Don't go crash course on a weekend. You cannot learn all of this in a weekend. And if you go to test, you're going to forget it. So trust me, it's a systematic approach. We have 19 units in our Fast Tracks programs. We have the black and we have the plus. The only difference is the plus includes videos. The black is our basic course. Um, if you want all those videos, then just go with the plus. It's worth it. It's totally up to you, though. And we will help you learn. You're not alone. You also get access to the Sparky Hub. And in the Sparky Hub, we have a special Fast Tracks Black and Plus forum where you can chime in with other Fast Track students. That's all that's allowed in there. And you can all learn the NEC together, right? All right, folks. Hopefully you got something out of that. And uh, thanks for following me on this lesson. Till next time, stay safe. God bless.